Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm sharing 30 cards that I made with the January of 2024 Crafty Courtyard Kit called Happy Hello. And I only used seven sheets of the pattern paper from the paper pad. Here is a real quick look at what all is included in the kit. I used a few of the sketches from my current quarterly card challenge number 13 as inspiration. And I adapted them to make slimline and mini slimline cards as well as some A2 size cards. I'll show you how to cut the papers to get the pieces that I needed for all of my cards. Now, if you haven't downloaded the printable for my challenge number 13 yet, you can get it when you sign up as a free member over on my Patreon page, which I'll have linked below. But in case you're not familiar with my challenges, I share how to create 15 A2 sized cards using six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern papers. I'll link an introduction video below so you can get all the details and find out how to enter to win one of many prizes valued at over $1,000 from over 20 different companies, including Pink and Main, who is one of our super sponsors. Typically when I start making cards, I start with matching up the papers in my paper pad with the cardstock that's included, so I'll know what colors I need to use for stamping. I've matched up all of these plaids with my colors, and I'm showing two patterns for each color even though I only ended up using seven of the plaids to make my cards, but I went ahead and cut up some Nina Solar Y 80 pound cardstock to a seven and a half inch square. This is the size of the sticky mat that's inside the Alta New stamping wheel, which is what I'm using to stamp my images today. I haven't used this much since I got it, but I thought I'd give this a try again since I have a lot of stamping to do. I kept the one inch strips and the three and a half inch pieces of cardstock that were cut off because I'll be using those also. Now since my stamps are new, I'm using my fingers to help remove some of the stickiness. But I placed the big happy stamp to the far left and I added some of the sentiments to the right of it. But I plan to turn the top of my stamp wheel 180 degrees so that I can stamp the same thing on the bottom half. Since these stamps come with coordinating dies, I'm making sure to space these out enough so that my dies won't be too close together. I've selected four colored inks by Pink and Main, the Park, which is a lime green color, Barber Shop, which is the darker blue, Asphalt, which is the black ink, and also Dress Shop, the dark pink color. I'm starting with the park, adding the handy velcro handle that came with the bundle so I can ink this up well. And I used my air hockey table pusher to apply pressure. If you purchase the bundle of inks, you get the handle and the velcro for free. And the last time I checked, the ink bundle was on sale over on the Pink and Main website. So if you're in the market for some wonderful inks and colors that match the cardstock that come in the Crafty Courtyard kits, I'll link it in the description box below. Now, since this is my first time stamping with this, I gave it another coat since my stamp isn't quite conditioned yet. But I love that the Pink and Main inks are really juicy, so you usually only have to give it one coat. I'm still getting used to using the stamp wheel out of habit. I went to try to remove the cardstock so that I could rotate it and then I remembered I didn't have to. I just have to rotate my stamp wheel. So the second stamp did much better and I didn't need a second coat. I removed that sheet and replaced it with a new one and I kept repeating this process. So I continued stamping several different solid colors which I won't show you on camera because I stamped a lot of happies and this video would be way too long if I did. But since one of the plaid patterns had a darker green, I decided to pull out these cubes and try an ombre effect. So I started with the darkest shade on the H and the A, and then I applied a lighter shade and then the lightest shade over on the end. And I thought these would pull in the different shades of the green in the paper. And I had to add another coat of the lightest shade. Next, I thought I'd try the ombre effect going from top to bottom. And I really loved how this turned out. I loved it so much that I decided to pull out another set of cubes in pinks and reds that match some of the shades in the pink and red plaids from the pattern paper. And I thought I would try it again. And I really loved this too. Some of the other ideas that I had for stamping these would be to use some embossing ink and add the sangria embossing powder on top that comes in the Crafty Courtyard kit. You could really do a lot with uh, the stamp. Maybe I'll share some of the bloopers from this video later on in the year, but I'll tell you that I made a mistake not once, not twice, but three times while filming this and stamping using the stamp wheel. 
So I'll show you the end result here and I'll see if you can guess what I did without telling you. Let me know in the comments section below if you want to take a guess. So my next step was to stamp out the rest of the sentiments that go along with the happy, actually all of them. And I used the three and a half inch strips that I cut off from the paper that I used for the seven and a half inch square. I placed one across the top and another across the bottom. And again, I rotated the wheel instead of the paper. This was actually way faster once I got the hang of it. But I stamped these in the same colors as the happy sentiments that I did earlier. And I also wanted to mention that I brought in some extra colors that match the plaids to stamp the happy and the sentiments, which you'll see me use on my finished cards here in a bit. So here are all of the different sentiments that I stamped out in the different colors. And as you can see, I have a lot. <laughs> so since these stamps have coordinating dies, my next step is to cut out all of them. And so I placed the dies on top using some low tack mint tape. And I used my Gemini electronic cutting machine since it's larger than my Spellbinders Platinum manual machine. And I recently rearranged my craft room and made the Gem Gemini more easily accessible. I stopped using it for a while because my plates were <laughs> extremely warped. But I bought some new ones since then. But I figured I'd give these old ones a try. And it actually went through just fine. But anyway, I'll share the process of how I made this go a little faster. And I've shared this in previous videos before. But once you cut out the first one, you'll want to keep the cardstock. You can use it as a template to be able to line up the remaining squares or other stamped images so that you don't have to keep placing the dies down with mint tape. You just carefully remove the die cuts, keeping the dies taped in place, and then you can line up another square behind it. You just stick that part of the tape to the new square. But once you have one side cut out, you just flip it 180 degrees and then you'll do the other side. So I did this 24 times. So again, I won't show you all of this on camera. I had one big long crafting session this past Saturday, but I got a lot of cards made and I had a blast. So I'm just sharing parts that I think you'll find helpful if you want to make a bunch of cards in one sitting. But let me tell you more about the Crafty Courtyard kits if you're new to Pink and Main. They are one of the monthly subscription products available from Pink and Main. The base price is only $34.99 plus shipping, which is based on your location. And they usually ship around the 15th, but you can still purchase the kits through the end of the month unless it sells out. But what's great about being a subscriber to any of the monthly subscription products is that you receive a 15% discount off of all products in the store anytime you shop as long as you're an active subscriber. So it's definitely worth it to sign up. If you'd like to subscribe, I'll have a link down in the description box. This is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my channel. And one of the other subscription products, the foil of the month kit, actually coordinates with this month's Crafty Courtyard kit. So if you love toner foiling, you'll definitely want to check it out if you get the Crafty Courtyard kits. Anyway, here are all of my happies placed in stacks by color. So I've got the dress shop pinks, the lime greens, the darker greens, and the ombre. And then I also have the barbershop blue. I did stamp one in teal. I have a couple stamped here in black. And then these are the ones that I stamped with hot pink and black, which kind of gave it a purple color. And then I've got the pinks with the ombres and the reds. And I did uh, cut out two solid happies which I actually cut, cut out several other colors um, without using the stamp but I have all of the little sentiments cut out in a big pile on the left but here are all of my card bases so I cut some a2 size card bases that measure five and a half by eight and a half that were scored at four and a quarter inches and then I also cut some mini slimline cards that measure three and a half by six inches so for the card base, you'll need cardstock that measures seven inches by six inches, and then you'll score it at three and a half inches on the seven inch side. And then I also cut some regular slimline card bases that measure three and a half by eight and a half. So you'll need some cardstock that measures seven inches by eight and a half inches. And again, you will score that at three and a half inches. Regular slimline cards are just two and a half inches wider than the mini slimlines. I used a variety of colors for my card bases, even though you only see me working with white here in the video. But I made sure to save all of the cut pieces 
or the cutoff pieces because I use some of those for layers. And as mentioned before, I used a few sketches from my latest quarterly card challenge number 13 as inspiration for these cards. But of course, I had to adjust the measurements a bit due to having different sizes, you know, the slim line or the mini slim lines. So now I'll show you how I cut each of my papers to get the most out of my supplies. First, I cut off two half inch strips that are six inches in length and these will be used on the mini slimline cards. Next, you'll turn that piece and cut it three and three quarter inches so that you have a three and three quarter by five inch plaid panel. Then with the piece that's left that measures five in inches in length, you'll just continue cutting half inch strips. And then the last strip will be a little bit skinnier. It'll measure a quarter of an inch. Oh, and, and I forgot to mention, you also need to take one of these half inch strips and cut it in half so that it measures three inches. And you'll use these at a diagonal. You'll actually trim several of these off when you put them on some of the cards. Now to clarify, you'll cut one of the half inch by six inch strips in half at three inches. And this shorter piece will be used on the left side of the mini slimline cards like you see here. But I cut most of my papers this way but you'll see I kept some of the small five inch by two and a quarter inch panels whole rather than cutting them into half inch strips. And you'll see what I did with those here in a bit. But to convert card sketch eight from challenge 13 into a mini slimline card, you just line up the six inch strip across the bottom and the three inch strip along the edge like this. Then you'll place the happy in the space above and to the right on the plaid. And you'll see me testing out different solid colors just to see what I like. But with some of these, I ended up going in a different direction. Next, I used the more subtle side of the plaids for the A2 size cards. Some of the stamped polka dot happies were too difficult to read on a lot of these plaids. So I tried using some solid colors. I cut the happy out of the layer, making sure to put the die directly in the center of the four by five and a quarter inch pieces so that I have an even border all the way around for my layer. But this is just to give you an idea of what I did. Like I said, I ended up changing some of the things around when I went to glue it down. Some of the panels I didn't trim down. I left them the same size as the card base to completely cover the front so that I could use the white card bases. It just leaves a slightly bigger colored border or frame around the three and three quarter by five inch plaid panels. Now let me show you what I did with the slim line sized cards. You'll take your seven by eight and a half inch piece and score it at three and a half inches on the seven inch side. If you have a small scoring board like me, you'll have to flip it over since the card is longer than the board. But I always like to line up the edges of my card in the scoring board so that the bottom edges meet up and then I'll burnish it down with my bone folder. So for these slim lines, I adapted sketch number 14 to work on this size card. You'll wanna use the half inch strips at an angle on the top left and bottom right corners. And you can use the pieces that you cut off for another strip. So here I'm just trying to make sure that I have the same angle going on. I like to look at the triangle that it makes and try to have the same size triangle on the opposite corner. Then once the glue mostly dries, you can trim off the edges with your scissors. And then next I'm bringing in two more half inch strips in a different green plaid. And I'm gluing these fairly close to the other strips so that there will be plenty of room for the big happy sentiment. I used a small part of the cutoff piece to put in the top left corner of this particular card. But you really, you could cut these half inch strips in multiple ways, which I'll show you here in a bit when I show you additional finished cards. But I'll show you the same layout used on a mini slimline card. I'm using the cutoff pieces and again gluing them at an angle on opposite corners. Since this is a smaller card, I'm only using one plaid strip on each corner. And for this one, I used one of the black happies since the lime green doesn't stand out enough. Another option would be to just add a skinny strip along the left hand side or you can just use one of the six inch strips across the bottom. It really is up to you. But again, here are the two that I already glued down that were adapted from sketch eight from my challenge. And these are all of the mini slim lines. So like I said, you've already seen these first two already, but these are the ones that I adapted sketch eight from challenge 13. I just used smaller strips and this is the one where I took the half inch strip and I put it in both corners and I added some skinny sticker strips along the edges of 
those plaid papers. I only made one like this, but it's pretty simple. And then this is one where I put the half inch by six inch strip across the bottom and it says Happy Mother's Day. And then this is one where I cut the six and a half inch paper in half and then I took the three inch piece and cut it at a diagonal and I placed the everything script sentiment along the edge at a diagonal. And then um, here is another one where I did basically the same thing. It's just the opposite side. But I like this red and black and white plaid. It's, it's really kind of striking. But I put that for you script on top of that black plaid so it would stand out. And here is one where I used the plaid for the entire background. This one measures three and a quarter by five and three quarters. And I put that on top of the Riverwalk cardstock. I thought I'd try the big sentiment on this uh, since it's a more subtle plaid. And it says happy for you. And here's another one where I use plaid for the background, except this one measures three by five and a half inches. And it has a three and a quarter by five and three inch layer from that green foil card stock. And I cut happy from that same four card stock along with white to give it a second layer and to help it stand out from that busy plaid background. And I put the so very script die cuts up on the top left. That one could be used around Christmas time. You could stamp a Christmas sentiment on the inside. But uh, those were all of my mini slimline cards. And now I'll show you the regular slimline cards. This first one is where I used two of the different green plaids and I put them at a diagonal on the corners. You've already seen this one. But I used the um, ombre, the green ombre stamped happy. And I really like how that one turned out. This is another one where I made the strips a little bit longer and I placed them at a different diagonal. And I added two different color stickers along the edges of the plaid paper, but I really love this one. Then here's another one with the two different green plaids. And I added the lime green sticker strips along the edges and it looks like I left one off, so I'll have to fix that. But I layered the happy with a darker green behind it. I definitely think that helps to make the light green stand out on the white. And then this is one where I put three of the same plaid strips all on one side and I scooted over the happy and added so very happy for you. And then this is one where I took a three by three inch square and cut it in half and placed the diagonals on opposite corners. And I added a few black shiny sticker strips. Super quick and easy. Just another idea for you. But these are all of my slimline cards. Next, I'll show you the A2 size cards. First, I have this one where I used the three and three quarter by five inch panel on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch green layer to cover the entire front of the white card base. And I cut the happy from the school bus yellow card stock. And then this is one where I just used the plaid panel directly on a white card base and I added the you make me happy in blue on top. And then this next one is where I used the red ombre happy on top of the pink and red plaids. And I used red cardstock behind the panel and behind the happy die cut to help make it stand out a little more. I think this stamped in the different colors is just so pretty. And then this one I layered the yellow happy with white on top of this green plaid. And uh, then this next one is where I used the green foil cardstock that came in the kit. I layered both the panel and the happy with red cardstock. This one will be good for Christmas time. And then here's one that I created using, um, or without using any pattern paper, I should say. I used another one of the red and pink ombre happies, and I placed it at a diagonal and trimmed off the edges. And I added three different color sticker strips on the top left corner, plus some red hearts in the top right. And I layered this happy with red cardstock. I just love that one. And then here's another one where I converted Sketch 8 from Challenge 13, but I just changed the size of the strips so that I could use what I already had cut up and it would leave plenty of room to add the happy die cut. And I added the lime green stickers along the edges of the plaid strips. I made several A2 cards like this. Here's another one that I made with the blue and red. Um, and then here's another one with the green, similar to the first one that I showed and then this is one where I used the teal happy along with the pink and teal plaid st strips along the edges. I love those two colors together and then there's another one of my favorites. I think I've got this one where I used the happy um, that was stamped with hot pink but it still had a little bit of black on top of the stamp so it turned out this purpley color which was actually a shade in the plaid strips. And this is an A2 card with the two diagonal strips in the corners in the two different green plaids. I just modified Sketch 14 a bit. 
And then here's an A2 card where I just put the two plaid strips on the same corner and tilted the happy sentiment and added the you make me script die cuts on top. And uh, then this is one where I just added a half inch strip along the left edge. And then this is another one just like the one I showed before, um, except I used a wider strip across the bottom and left off the left strip. And then this is one where I used the other side of one of the pink plaids across the bottom and I added a few skinny sticker strips above it. And then here's another one just like it, except I changed the sentiment to say Happy Mother's Day instead of birthday. But those are all of my A2 cards. So overall, I made a total of 30 cards for many different occasions using only seven sheets of pattern paper from the paper pad that came in the kit. I didn't use any specialty dies, just the contents of the kit plus some shiny sticker strips. I really hope you liked my cards and enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you would click the thumbs up button. Let me know which card layout and size is your favorite in the comments below. I really hope this inspires you to get creative. Remember, you can always use a card sketch as inspiration and change it up for the different size cards that are out there. Don't forget, if you want to subscribe to the Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kit, you can click on my link below in the description box. And remember, you can sign up for the Crafty Courtyard Kits through the end of the month, as long as there are still kits available. If you're new to my channel, I hope you'll subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I really appreciate you watching this video, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.